Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing very, very well. I hope that your weekend was fantastic. I hope it was full of reading and fun and family and everything that you needed. My weekend's been good, actually. The weather's been a little hot, so not as much outside time as I would like, but it did cool down a little bit. We were able to get out last night. Um, I have finished one book, which I really, really loved and cannot wait to tell you guys about, and started another book that isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be, but it is intriguing, so I'm excited to see where it goes. Can't wait to tell you guys about that either. Today's video actually though is going to be about five fantasy series and one science fiction series that I cannot wait to complete. Now, they're in all different states of writing. Some of them are done. All of the books are out. I'll be able to read them all and I have them all. Some of them are in the process of being written, but they're just out there and I am super excited. I've read one or two books in the series and I'm super excited to see where they go. So, as always, come on, let me tell you about these series and you guys can help me decide what I need to read next. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with the only science fiction series on the list, and that is the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. Now, there are three books in this series. The first is The Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet. The second is A Closed and Common Orbit. And the third is Record of a Spaceborn View. Now, I have read and absolutely loved A Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet. This was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction, I want to say three years ago. I may be wrong. You know how time just sometimes flies by and three years was actually seven years ago? You know how it is. Um, I often describe this book as a mix between Galaxy Quest and Star Trek. Um, this is the story of a group of people on a spaceship that are traveling a very long distance because a new planet, a new group of people want to join sort of their federation that they're part of. And this group um, is part of a conglomerate that creates sort of the space tunnels that link parts of space. So you can get from one location to another more quickly, but this planet doesn't have one. So it's a very long journey to that planet to create one of these um, space wormholes for lack of a better term. But while we're on that journey, we get to meet all of these really fantastic characters that make up the crew of this ship. And we stop along the way for many different journeys, many different reasons. Um, there is a hijacking, there is, you know, returning to a home planet. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that goes on and it's actually super fun and super exciting. There are times that you're really laughing with the characters. There's times where you're feeling really sentimental. I will be honest with you, I sort of teared up at the end. This book was around a lot. Um, a couple of years ago, and when I read it, I absolutely loved it. I know that the second book um, and the third book aren't exact continuations of the series. It's not like one, two, and three, but different characters make different sort of appearances in the series, um, and I don't want to speak about any of the other plots because I think it gives away some of the stuff that happens in the first book, but I will say that I was totally bought into these characters. I flew through this book. If you are a fan of Star Trek The Next Generation, which I was. I was a Trekkie when I was younger. Um, I think that you will absolutely love this. So that is The Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet, A Closed and Common Orbit, and Record of a Spaceborn View, all by Sp uh, Becky Chambers out from Harper Voyager. Um, Becky, I think, is a local author. I think she lives in San Francisco, so maybe one day I will get to meet her. Um, the next series, book two, is heading out to your shelves so soon. And so I was super excited when it arrived in my mailbox. Um, and I had to contact Kendra Winchester immediately because we actually buddy read book one, The Poppy War by R.F. Quing together. And we absolutely loved it. And book two, look at this guys, 
the Dragon Republic is coming out. And just I'm just going to take a moment. If you guys can see how beautiful this artwork is, hold these up here for you guys. Um, now, The Poppy War starts this series. It is an Asian-inspired fantasy series where we have a young girl. Her name is Rin. Rin has, is orphaned, and she has sort of been thrown into this family where she's really worked as forced labor. And she has been sold off in a marriage arrangement. And the only way that she's going to be able to get out of that marriage is if she tests into the one of the many colleges that you can sort of test into across this country. And unfortunately for her, she has to test into the best of them because then she'll get a scholarship. Because obviously the family she's working with, they're not going to pay for the schooling. Um, no, this is not a spoiler at all. She tests and she gets into the school where they basically train you in all of these different topics to sort of find out what your specialty is. And while there, Rin learns that maybe the gods of the past that, that most of the continent think have disappeared aren't maybe as gone. And also there's a war coming. There's a takeover coming. And her and the students that she's training with are going to be vital in sort of how this all goes. This was a tremendous amount of fantastic world building totally intriguing and intricate and so good but Rin is actually the centerpiece of this story she is a strong flawed young lady and she makes decisions and you'll be like no don't do that but then you're totally bought into the story of what's going to happen to her next I cannot wait to see what happens in the Dragon Republic. Again, I have to thank Harper Voyager so much for sending me this early copy. It comes out next month, you guys. So if you haven't read The Poppy War, now's your time. It's actually out in a beautiful paperback as well right now. So you can get it or get it at your library, however you do. But definitely get this series on your radar. I don't even know if I know what the name of the actual series is. But I'm so bought in. I love it. Love it. The next book, I don't actually, on the next series, I don't have book one because I lent it to my friend Shane and he has not read, read it or returned it yet. This is me looking at you, Shane, through this camera. The first book is The Bear and the Nightingale, but that is followed up by The Girl in the Tower and book three, which is The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. Now, book The Bear and the Nightingale was on book two a little bit a few years ago, and now book two and book three are out. I have read book one and book two in this series and love them. A Russian-inspired folklore fantasy series. This is the story of a young woman, and I always mispronounce her name, Vasil Vasilisa? Va uh, yeah, wrong, wrong, I know. Um, but what I do love is that she comes from a small town in northern Russia where sort of the um, pagan uh, uh, respect for the gods of, of the past are still very present in her life. But it is at odds with sort of Christianity, which is sort of sweeping across the country. What happens is an evil force comes to play in her community and she has to use everything she knows and everything she has been taught uh, to defeat that evil force and save her community. That's book one. Um, and it is so good. I really, really, really loved book one. Book two was even better. She winds up traveling to Moscow and there's a bunch of different intrigue and different creatures and different things that she's fighting against. I'm not gonna tell you too much about it. And I have not read at all what The Winter of the Witch is about because I don't want it to be spoiled. All I know is that I cannot wait to see what happens in the rest of this. So I'm sorry I don't have the, the first book. It is out on Lent, but that's The Bear and the Nightingale, The Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. Really love those books, guys. The next book technically isn't part of a series. But it was the first book that I have read by the author, and it has just inspired me to pick up so many more. And I don't even really need to talk about uh, Juliette Maliere. Um, and this is The Harp of Kings. This comes out from Ace Books on September 3rd, 2019. So I have to thank them so much for sending me this copy. Now, I read this book. I was on a trip. I had gone to Atlanta for training, if you guys remember. And I was flying back. And I just needed something to sort of refresh my mind. And I literally read this entire novel on the flight back from Atlanta. Um, this is the story of a brother and sister who at the beginning of the book are sort of in a warrior school where they are competing for spots within this, uh, this uh, organization that are hired warriors around the kingdom. 
um, they're asked very early on in the book to be part of a group that are going to go to the city where a harp has been misplaced. This harp is special because it is only played and only taken out on the day when a new king is sworn in and his reign starts. However, with it gone missing, they're worried that the populace will think that the reign of that king is cursed if they don't find it. So they go there under the guise of being traveling musicians. Now, this book has sort of a folklore fairy tale feel to it, but it also ha and it has druids and it has sort of that old Irish sort of sensibility. It is so good. And I, I kid you not, I just devoured this book. And it has made me really want to read more books by this author. And on my shelf, I have The uh, Daughter of the Forest, which I believe is actually the first book in a series. Let me make sure. This is book one in the Seven Waters trilogy. This was recommended to me highly by my friend Chris over at Chris's Bookish Cauldron, who is really my fantasy go-to when I need recommendations regarding fantasy novels. Though he still hasn't convinced me to read Robin Hobb because those books are so long and there are so many of them. Um, but I'm super bought into The Daughter of the Forest. I just think that I'm going to love it and absorb into it as much as I did um, her novel, The Harp of the Kings. So I'm super excited to get into more of Juliet Marie Lair. She's Canadian French, I think. And um, yeah, I'm saying that wrong. But yes, I am definitely into this. And The Harp of Kings, I believe, is set in the same world as this trilogy. So you can sort of see some of the overlap. There's going to be no surprise on the next series that is on my this list, and that is because I don't believe you have heard of how much I loved Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. I really should take this Barnes & Noble sticker off. I don't know why it's still on here. Um, because it won't come off smoothly, that's why. Um, I loved this book. This is set in a world where there are sort of three classes of people. There's the demons who are in charge of all. There's a demon king. There's a group of djinn in the middle who are sort of half animal, half human, and the humans which are on sort of the bottom rung of the ladder. Our main character is chosen to be part of the seven or eight, I can't remember exactly how many there are, I apologize, um, of the human concubines that are brought to the demon king as sort of this way of him showing how he is in touch with that part of his populace. Um, she meets someone and falls in love, and this book is about them bucking the system and changing the way that the world that they live in is going to be run moving forward. This has queer representation and magic and uh, so much good stuff. Again, I flew through this book, and the reason I'm telling you about it is because book two, Girls of the Storm and Shadow, comes out in November, November 5th, 2019. 17. Um, 2019, and I got to meet Natasha at Book Expo America. She signed this advanced reader's copy for me. I absolutely adore her. I think she is just so nice and so sweet, and I love this series. I'm trying really hard to wait closer to November so that I don't read this too early and tell you guys about it too early, but it may be a little bit difficult to do. But if you haven't taken my advice and re read Girls of Paper and Fire, do it. Trust me, you will not regret it. And then get ready. Pre-order from your local independent bookstore, Girls of Bo Storm and Shadow, or have your library pre-order it. When I stood in line to see Natasha at Book Expo America, the line was ginormous. People love this book and this series. So I'm super, super excited to see what she does with it next. The last book and series in this video is again because of my friend Chris over at Chris's Bookish Cauldron. Now, in August of last year, I was going through a bit of a reading slump and I couldn't really get into anything. And sometimes when that happens to me, fantasy is the answer because I can really just dive into a world and get lost. I can get lost in the story and it can sort of just move me along super, super quickly. And that's what happened with 12 Kings in Sherakai by Bradley P. B Bole. Bole? Is that how you say your name, Bradley? I'm sorry, mispronounced it. He is absolutely just a wonderful human being. He does a lot of baking, which you can see on his Instagram, and, um, and it looks delicious, and he has not sent me any. But what he did send me so nicely are books two and books three in his series, The Blood Upon the Sand and 
A Veil of Spears. And book four is actually coming out. I want to say, if it's not next month, it's the month after. I apologize. I can't, I don't have that book on hand, but I'm going to get a hold of it. And what he does, if you ever get a chance to see him, is he actually, in callig calligraphy, does his initials as his signature in his books. Is that not fantastic? Now, this is set in sort of a desert-inspired world. I'll just hold up the first one because it has this great cover here. We have a young woman. Her name is Sida. Uh, she, is, she lives and sort of survives in this world. She's really cool. In the beginning of the novel, we find out that she is sort of under guise, a warrior in sort of a gladiator-type setting. She's pretty kick-your-butt good. And you sort of get an idea who she is just from the first few pages of how she fights in this gladiator type setting. We find out very soon that her mother was killed by one of, or maybe more of, the 12 kings that rule this land in which she lives. And she has made it sort of her personal vendetta to get back at the 12 kings. But the 12 kings are there by magical influence, by the, the touch of the gods. So there's more to who they are and how they got there than meets the eye. And Sita what gets in involved sort of in that story. She doesn't know her father, she doesn't know the world she comes from, and she doesn't really understand why her mother was killed. Lots of amazing stuff in that story. So good, you guys. But there's also political intrigue. There's other stuff that's going on. There's friendships gone awry. There's all of this other stuff. These books are more complicated in the sense that there's a lot of buildup. There's a lot of story. There's a lot of story arc. So you really get involved and you can really just get lost. So like for fans of Lord of the Rings or fans of... Um, Oh, The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan or something like that where you really want to dive into your fantasy series and really just get lost in a world for many books. I think that the whole series is going to be six books. Um, and as you can tell, they are chunksters. So there is a bunch to read here. So this is The Twelve Kings in Sherakai. A, a, oh, The Blood Upon the Sand is book two. And A Veil of Spears by Bradley P. Uh, B Bole, and this is out from Daw, and yeah, super excited. I need to just sit down and read it and just develop, you know, just dedicate some time to it. Have you guys read a fantasy series or a science fiction series that you started that you haven't finished that you're excited about? Have you read any of these? And then should I read them as well? You should come and you should tell me about it and we should talk about it in the comments below. As always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, Welcome. I hope you like what you saw and you stay around for another video. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!